This is my daughter, Charleston Jane. She's three years old, and when it comes to clothing, she's completely and totally free. She loves leopard print, she loves pink, anything pink, and she loves her yellow rain jacket. And not because some magazine tells her that that's what's in and that's what she's supposed to wear, right? She loves it because she just loves it. It's what she likes. See, her clothes are actually a complete translation of who she is and what she enjoys. And I'm telling you about this because that's actually where all of us start when it comes to clothing. For each of us, we all started in a spot where clothes were just simply a visual representation of who we are, right? Our preferences and our desires. But if her story is like most people's story, this is about to change in a big way. Pretty soon, um, pretty soon she's going to actually uh, experience something that I call the lie. It's going to come through magazines, it's going to come through brands, it's going to come from some idiot kid on the playground, realistically. And the lie that she's going to hear is this, you are not okay. You need to buy things in order to be made whole. You see, as she starts to hear this lie, <clears throat> uh, it really is it's kind of underpinning a lot of what the, ma the modern fashion industry really communicates to most women, which is based on kind of the Greek system of forms, right? There's like a perfect version of woman over here, uh, or man over here, and then there's the rest of us over here. And essentially what modern fashion does is we need to mute and change those things that are unique about ourselves, our, you know, our shape, our dimensions, those are coloring, um, to try to get a little bit closer to this ideal over here. So if you're curvy, you need to wear all one color, right? Um, or you need to buy something with vertical stripes. If you're tall, you need to buy flats, right? And it creates this endless cycle of consumption where we're buying things in order to be made uh, more close to what we consider perfect, right? Um, and the cycle results in us buying a lot of clothing, um, and that results in clutter in our closets, in our hearts, and in our minds. Clothes that aren't really us, because that was kind of the point, right? It was actually to make it less of us. Um, and as Charleston's father, I'm going to try to communicate, no, you're okay, right? I love you. And you don't need to buy anything to be made uh, more whole. But the truth is, is that my voice is pretty small compared to an industry that's multi-billions of dollars, right? In fact, that industry um, is going to make over $120,000 off of my daughter's insecurities throughout her lifetime. And the rate of consumption is actually increasing. What we found is that uh, in 1930, the average woman had 35 items of clothing in her closet. Today, it's over 120 clothes that we don't even like, right? How's, the, how's this lie so good at selling stuff? Here's how it works. Picture yourself in the mall, right? You go into the mall, and uh, we see this massive glossy photo, right? And it's people just in total bliss wearing denim jackets. And it says, you know, if you buy this denim jacket, you'll be happy like us. And us wanting to be part of this, you know, included in this club, we say, OK, I'll buy it. So we kind of go over there and not feel OK. All right, great. And then the same models, like two weeks later, three weeks later, they're all wearing leather jackets. And they say, buy leather jackets so you can be cool just like us. So we go over there and we say, okay, great. And so then we buy that and then we're okay. And then a week later, it's bomber jackets. And the cycle continues and continues. It's, an, it's, it's really exclusion um, so that we can get this perpetual buying cycle. And it never runs out, right? And that's actually where I come to the end of the story. Because I, <clears throat> Blake Smith, am the CEO of a fashion company. In fact, I've spent the past five years of my life in an industry whose fundamental driver of growth is the exploitation of my daughters. And during that time, I've kind of learned two major things about the lie. Number one, the lie works. It's incredibly effective at selling stuff. It's a great tool to get somebody to buy things for the rest of their lives. But I've also learned something else. Number two, the lie can be reversed. It can be beat. You do not have to keep feeling the way that you feel. And I've dedicated my life and dedicated my company to actually fighting that lie in the marketplace. Um, and as we've served tens of thousands of women in the process of doing that, I've learned that there are two major tools that I want to leave with you today, um, two tools that you can use to combat the lie in your own life. <clears throat> Tool number one, I know who I am. Right, so the lie is you are not okay. That's where it starts, right? You are not okay. So we need to actually, we need to confront that lie front and center and say, no, I, I know who I am and I am okay, right? So how do we get there? For some of us, we can maybe literally right now, you can take out a sheet of paper and you could write down, these are the things that I know that are true about myself. Things that have nothing to do with my physical appearance, but just are true valuable things. 
Um, if you get stuck, I personally, I got stuck, and so I felt like I needed some help. Go to a friend or a family member, someone that loves you and knows you really well, and ask them, how am I good for other people? Maybe they tell you something like, uh, your sense of humor is really uh, helpful in uh, tense situations. It disarms people. Write that down. That is you. That's who you are. It has nothing to do with your physical appearance. And own that thing so that when you see that big glossy poster in the mall, you can say, wait a second, no, I'm OK. <laughs> I know who I am. And now I can interpret what is this thing actually communicating to me. So I know who I am. Number two, I know what I like. Right? So the second part of the lie, the first part is, you're not okay. The second part is now buy this. We need to be able to say, wait a second, what is this? Is this a thing that I actually like personally? Right? Um, and that's the way of filtering the lie. Um, so how do we get there? How do we, how do we really figure out what it is that we like when it comes to clothing? Especially when we're submerged, right? We're completely wrapped up um, in uh, all these messages about what you should like or what you should buy. Um, I found an exercise that's really helpful in this. In fact, you may have already heard about it. Um, our company's promoted it a lot. Um, and it's this idea of go to your closet and hang up all of your clothes with the hangers facing toward you, right? So the hooks are facing toward you. And over the course of the next month, what I want you to do is each time you wear an item and you go to hang it back up, I want you to turn the hanger around. So it's almost like a log of what you've worn for an entire month. So at the end of the month, you're going to have hooks facing this way of clothes that you never wore and hooks facing this way of clothes that you did wear. And you're going to see two major things when you do that. First, you're going to realize that you only wear about 20% of the clothes that are in your closet. The rest of it is just clutter, and we could totally get rid of it. Um, and then second, you're going to see there's a theme throughout the clothes that, are actually, that you actually wore. There are colors, cuts, fabrics. This is kind of the core of what you like. Notice that. Write that down and say, OK, this is what I really enjoy. Um, this is kind of a step of unlocking your inner three-year-old, right? like my daughter Charleston. What is it that you like just because you like it? What's your favorite color? Why don't we ever talk about favorite color? Have you noticed that? We never talk about what your favorite color is anymore as adults. It seems childlike. But you should know what your favorite color is, and you should wear that color because you feel good in it, right? Um, I know who I am. I know what I like. If we can really practice this as a discipline over months and years, we can actually beat and combat and actually get past the lie. Um, but the truth is, is that we're, we're never going to get back to that sense of innocence like my daughter Charleston. We're, we're, I think that's, it's too far gone. But we can actually grow stronger than the lie. We can combat the lie. We can get past it. We can become men and women who actually stand on the other side of it. And we can help our brothers and sisters, our daughters, help them through it to a place of completeness apart from consumption. So today, I've talked to you a lot about the lie, right? Um, I've talked to you about where does it come from. I've talked to you about how to combat it. So as I'm wrapping this up, I want to leave you with the opposite of the lie. The opposite of the magazines, the opposite of the brands, the opposite of that kid on the playground. I want to leave you today with the truth, and that is this. You, all of you, are worthy of love. You don't have to buy or do anything for it. Thank you. <clears throat> Love you, Charleston.